could India have seen it coming? One month after the ruling BJP passed a resolution hailing its leader for taming the COVID pandemic, hospitals now turning away patients while the nation breaks world records for new infections and deaths. The fault of virulent new strains? Or was it poor forward planning? The public health crisis has now morphed into a crisis of confidence. How did it spin out of control? Why did authorities not shut down political rallies and religious festivals? Why censored tweets? And what to make of reports that the chief minister of India's most populous state, Uttar Pradesh, ordered a crackdown on hospitals that display signs that say they're running out of oxygen? We're going to be asking our panel about foreign help, past plans to make India the vaccine provider to the planet, and whether there's any way to avoid another national lockdown. It would be a grave decision to take in a nation where so many day laborers depend on an open economy for their next meal. Today in the France 24 debate, we're asking how to control India's COVID spike. Joining us from Delhi, uh, Rajib Dasgupta, chair of the Center of Social Medicine and Community Health at Jawaharlal Nehru University. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, from Kolkata, capital of West Bengal, Ruchir Joshi, columnist uh, for The Telegraph newspaper. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. From London, uh, Mahendra Jadeja, advisor to the uh, Conservative Friends of India. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. France24.com senior editor, Leela Jacinto, is watching it all for us. Thank you. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. The France 24 debate on Facebook and Twitter. Hashtag F24 debate. For the first time in five days, India did not break its 24 hour period infection rate record. Still, more than 323,000 new confirmed cases this Tuesday of COVID, with hospitals and crematoriums swamped. Yuka Hoye has more. Frustrated and desperate, they queue for hours, hoping to get remdesivir. The price of the controversial antiviral drug has skyrocketed in recent days as people rush to get it. From yesterday, I guess me and my friends and my family had made around 150 to 200 calls, but nobody's picking up the call. So this is a system failure. With patients suffocating in hospitals due to a lack of oxygen supplies, India's death toll is fast approaching the grim milestone of 200,000, which many consider to be a massive undercount. The first batch of medical aid from Britain has arrived, including 100 ventilators and 95 oxygen concentrators. France, Saudi Arabia and even India's arch-rival Pakistan have also offered help. The US is finally releasing raw materials to make vaccines. Australia, while suspending passenger flights to India, joins the global drive. 500 non-invasive ventilators, 1 million surgical masks, 500,000 P2 and N95 masks, 100,000 surgical gowns, 100,000 goggles, 100,000 pairs of gloves and 20,000 face shields. The deepening crisis in India could have global implications as a local variant poses a threat and as many nations rely on an AstraZeneca vaccine produced in the country. We're going to ask about that international response. But first, Rajib Dasgupta, I guess the only question to ask at this point is how bad is it? Well, um, as, as the Director General WHO put it yesterday, it's beyond heartbreaking. Uh, that sums up everything. Uh, all the ground reports have shown consistently that hospital systems as well as cremation services are overwhelmed and challenged. And that is a distressing picture across major cities, particularly uh, Delhi, which has seen an inexorable rise of new cases uh, in, the, in, the, in the last week or so. Uh, that, that savage rise was unprecedented to a certain extent, unforeseen uh, and certainly unfortunate. Uh, but but that's been the, the, the history uh, in the last week or so. And both the state and central governments, as we know, have gone back to their drawing boards trying to set things right. 
Yeah, lots of concern about underreporting of cases. Officially, there were only seven COVID deaths Monday in uh, Gurgaon, that's southwest of the capital. But the Times of India reporting 90 cremations at one funeral ground Monday with ceremonies spilling over uh, into the parking lot. Rajiv, in fairness, is that down to authorities, the underreporting? Is it uh, malice intent or is it just because, well, you can only report the cases that show up in hospitals? Yeah, there are a few aspects about it. One, of course, is uh, COVID home deaths are not being certified as COVID, at least uh, initially. And uh, part of the reason is that, that that the process starts in the cremation ground or the burial ground, and that's dependent on what the medical certificate or at least medical documentation says. That's one part. The other is uh, often a propensity uh, among the medical authorities to to not count it as a COVID death if he or she had other comorbid conditions. Now, the WHO's own advisory uh, issued last year in April 2020 on what counts as a COVID death is pretty clear on the instructions. So sometime in the middle of last year, many states actually went for correction in those figures. Plus the fact that in an epidemic situation, certain uh, events can genuinely be missed. So. There are all these possibilities, and undercount happens across all countries and in and certainly in these uh, extreme situations. Rachir Joshi, uh, our correspondent in Delhi, was uh, saying that uh, uh, people are just naturally scared, staying off the streets. Is it the same where you are? Uh, no, because uh, both Delhi and Bombay are. Uh, are a little ahead of us, uh, as is projected right now. Bombay has handled uh, the surge of this new mutant uh, better than other cities, I believe, because they had lockdowns and they had systems in place. They learned from their lessons last year, from the mistakes last year. And uh, Delhi is the worst right now. In Calcutta, where I am, we are waiting with uh, some anxiety, the elections, the state elections are just getting over. The last voting is day after tomorrow. And uh, despite all advice, you know, crowds have been allowed to gather over the last month and a half. And people are worried that that is going to cause uh, a, a knock-on effect of uh, a, a, a spike in the, in, in, the, in the infections and in the... In, in, the illnesses and deaths, uh, not as bad as the Kumbh Mela, probably, which caused huge uh, spike. That religious but festival. The, the religious festival in North India that took place against all good sense. However, uh, the election was across uh, almost six weeks. Crowds were allowed to gather, except in the last seven days, the crowds have been brought down to only 500 people per rally, which makes no sense, because 500 people, as we know, can spread COVID exponentially pretty fast. So at the moment, Calcutta hospitals don't have a oxygen problem. Uh, and uh, the private hospitals are all full. The government hospitals are not yet full. There are reports coming in from the small towns and villages that hospitals there have stopped testing for COVID because uh, they are rammed with COVID cases. Uh, they are completely swamped. But these are unconfirmed reports. So we are not as bad as Delhi, no. But uh, nowhere in the world is right now. Mahendra Jadeja, do you agree that it was madness to let religious festivals continue, to let political rallies continue when COVID was spiking? Well, it is uh, very, very difficult to, you know, the judge it there. But yes, I would uh, agree that uh, if the, you know, the surges uh, increase uh, in uh, in a country that whereby. Uh, uh, Kumbh Mela, it doesn't help because, there, as you know, that for a year, I think I believe, I'm not 100 percent confirmed there, but about 30 lakhs, you know, the people get together. And uh, I can uh, believe that I just heard it as well. Okay, look, uh, they have stopped uh, from the 20 days later, and now uh, there is uh, no more uh, gathering as such. So it is a bad practice that time, but now it's uh, putting the things right. And I hope, because most of the people, 
they attend the Kumbh Mela and they go back to their own state. And it's not only for the one particular state they go, they go to the different, different state there. And uh, they may have, you know, they carry the virus themselves and they're spreading themselves. So, yes, uh, uh, that was, a, you know, the bad decision in, in my, uh, my, uh, my way of thinking. And uh, I'm glad that they, they put it right now for the Kumbh Mela. Don't forget that uh, currently we also have a uh, Ramadan is uh, there and uh, Vaisakhi took place as well. So there are many, many, uh, you know, festivals uh, did, uh, did took place there and it's taking place as well. On, on top of that, it really doesn't help either. So that's, uh, you know, the mixture of uh, so many things you can put together. A mixture of so many things you can put together. And uh, uh, now we're at this sort of breaking point. You agree that um, there maybe should have been or should be a national lockdown? It's one of the ideas that was uh, floated when we saw those numbers start to, to rise. Well, recently I just spoke to today and uh, there was the highest peak was uh, over, uh, you know, the 350,000, but now it's gone down to it's a 320. So looks like it is, uh, you know, the peak is probably over. I hope that is a true picture is there. And because it's not everywhere, it's, uh, you know, the national lockdown doesn't help because you just heard about it. There's so many places, uh, uh, it's a quite, a, you know, the good area whereby the infection is not so bad. So it's a, it's an individual, the state has to decide it where is a, actually the uh, in a high surge there and you have to play accordingly. But in my view, that uh, Lockdown uh, is a necessary, but you know, the, in, a, in a different state and a different level, not a completely national uh, lockdown. It doesn't help because maybe some of the state are not so bad at all. Do you agree, Leela, uh, Jacinto, that it's uh, perhaps pinpointed regional lockdowns are better than a national circuit breaker? I would say that I don't think the government of India is is, is going to go in for a nationwide lockdown. Uh, you know, there was a, a very strict lockdown uh, last year around the same time in March, and that had a harrowing toll on the Indian economy and, uh, you know, migrant laborers who live in cities and have no home. And that was a spreader as well. So uh, I think this seems to be the lesson across the world, really, to have more more targeted uh, lockdown measures, uh, but we are definitely seeing uh, the you know the cause and effect of lockdown measures that were not implemented, the messaging that was not strong enough, uh, and 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 you can actually see how the different states and different cities uh, uh, are coping right now with this new variant. Yeah, because uh, Rajib, you were on with us. What it was ten days ago, and. Uh, uh Panelists were sounding the alarm. Was enough done since the last time you were on the show? Well, different states and different towns and cities have been in somewhat different phases, as uh, we were hearing. Uh, as, as Richard was explaining, Calcutta is still sort of behind, uh, waiting for the tsunami to hit, if I may. Uh, there has been... There has been the preparations has been of different scales. What's really, uh, what's really made news is the lack of oxygen uh, in 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 several states. Uh, one one explanation is that that uh, where oxygen is produced, uh, which is in, in limited locations, the distribution is a challenge, or rather, a very fast replenishment uh, and and maintaining that cycle is a challenge. The other uh, issue uh, in, in, in media discourse, at least, as well as in the government's own positions, is whether the number of intended plants, which were oxygen plants, which were planned, had actually been set up. There's, there's certainly space with it. Perhaps have I was been adequate. It's it's getting a bit choppy the line there uh, with, with New Delhi. We'll try to we'll try to 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 to, to fix that. Uh, yeah, Lila Jacinto, because that's 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 yeah the, the the oxygen supplies, and now we're seeing these uh, the 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 um, foreign aid coming foreign in. aid coming in. France, I know, is sending planes. We saw in the report how the UK has already done so. Uh, your thoughts on that? 
This is a welcome move. However, you know, uh, the effects of this will take probably, we've seen uh, in the past year, it takes around 15 days or two weeks to, uh, you know, for this effects to, to really show on the ground. But this is really startling. Uh, you know, India, as we all know, is the world's largest manufacturer of vaccines. Uh, you know, the shortage of oxygen is, of course, the most uh, harrowing thing to watch. Uh, but there's also been a shortage of drugs. Uh, and uh, and and the, so, you know, these are all problems that, of course, existed pre-COVID, uh, and it takes a crisis to 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 blow it up into 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 this level. Uh, but uh, you know, oxygen distribution took unduly long to 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 organize. Uh, you know, and this is happening in the nation's capital. This is not in some remote corner of India, under the gaze, you know, miles away from Parliament and the seats of power and logistics did not come through. And, you know, in India, it has a mixed medical system. So there are government uh, hospitals and government medical care where the poor go. Uh, and the affluent and, and upper middle classes go into private hospitals. So it's, it's, it's almost taken for granted that affluent people get access uh, to to medical care what has been so shocking about this is uh, is 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 the demo you know the democratic uh, way this virus has hit all economic sections really in new delhi well hit all um, hit people across all social classes uh, mahendra jadeda there is that question about the public private way of doing things basically today if you're in delhi um, and if you don't have money, you're in a desperate situation, be it to get treatment or access to vaccines. Uh, what can be done to, to make it more equitable? I think is in uh, Delhi particularly is a bigger, uh, you know, the kilometer area to, you know, the cover there. I think there is a, what I heard today, there is a oxygen, you know, the cylinders are available, but uh, logistically uh, you need a, you know, the special way to deliver the, you know, the oxygen. And this is what they're finding that difficult. Uh, that's what I've been told. And uh, I don't know, I can stand corrected that uh, uh, there are, over 520, uh, what you call uh, oxygen, uh, you know, the factory has been sanctioned by the prime minister, and uh, hope that uh, this will, uh, you know, help us, uh, you know, the, you know, the more oxygen to to give it to the, you know, the patient there. What I don't understand that because many many uh, time there is a lot of uh, problem is taking place by uh, lots of labor doesn't want it to go to. Uh, to go to the, you know, the hospital to, you know, the test themselves because it costs them money. And in case they get the, you know, the uh, positive, then they, they have to quarantine, they can't go to work there. And so who's going to feed them? Because sometimes even the individual people are not reporting back there. So I hope uh, that is a fixing, you know, more important. All right, we're going to pick up on that point when we come back. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate and uh, we're looking at uh, the COVID spike in India and uh, the desperation of many to try to get oxygen for their loved ones. We're talking about it with uh, Rajiv Dasgupta, chair of the Center of Social Medicine and uh, Community Health at Jawaharlal Nehru University from uh, Kolkata, uh, capital of West Bengal. Ruchir Joshi, columnist at uh, daily newspaper The Telegraph. Uh, from London, Mahendra Jadeja, Jadeja, excuse me, advisor to Conservative Friends of India and France24.com, senior editor uh, Leela Jacinto. Uh, Rajiv Dasgupta, just one question about this uh, current spike we're seeing. Is it about these uh, variants that are more virulent or is it about the uh, uh, social distancing that wasn't insisted upon enough? All right, we seem to have a problem with the audio issue. We'll try to to have that uh, resolved uh, quickly. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. 
Ah, now uh, I, I can hear you. Audible now. Now you can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah. So in the final analysis, I would argue that the weight is in front is in favor of of the new variants. Uh, though, though the behavioral uh, explanation seems to be the dominant one, and my reasons are as follows. Uh, according to the data released by the IHME, the Institute of Health uh, Metrics, uh, the mask use, though not never, uh, never very, very high in India, actually fell by only 10 percentage points between uh, August 2020 and about January, February 2021, uh, from down from uh, 71 to about 61. And the mobility index increased by about 20% for the same period, but then the economy had formally actually opened up, barring some limited sectors. Uh, on the other hand, the UK variant was identified as early as the last week of uh, December. The Punjab state, uh, the, the, the experience of the Punjab state, uh, the, the surge in cases uh, clearly linked to the UK variant. And the Maharashtra surge, uh, again, started in early February, linked to the B1617 variant. Now, why these two states are important? Because till about end March, these two states accounted for two-thirds of the national cases. And what we are witnessing in Delhi, as I said, this inexorable rise of cases very rapidly is possibly on account of multiple mutants at play. Uh, the other aspects on, on which there's a lot of consternation, which is the election, the, the, the religious gatherings, and so on, they actually came on the back of these variants. They didn't precede these variants. These may have, or would in, in all likely to have made the variant situation worse and lead, led to a greater dissemination. But, uh, but, but, the, but the importance of variants can in no way be underplayed. The importance of variants can in no way be underplayed. Let's talk about those elections. Despite the pandemic, there was 74% turnout Monday in the latest round of regional election voting in West Bengal. Here you see uh, Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee casting her ballot there's now a, a fourth candidate, by the way, who's died of COVID in West Bengal. That's pushed back polling in at least two constituencies. Uh, West Bengal, a sprawling state that stretches all the way from the Bay of Bengal uh, to uh, Bhutan in uh, the uh, Himalayas. That means the last votes uh, will be cast now on May the 16th. Um, so 74% turnout, despite of the surge in COVID. Uh, Rushir Jochi, are you surprised? Uh, can I make a separate point before I answer that question? Sure. That, 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 that uh, a slight disagreement with Rajiv there, where I would say that, yes, uh, the statistics he quoted preceded the Kumbh Mela and the elections. But what we have seen with uh, the central government in Delhi is that they have had a series of distractions which any normal government would not have had when they were facing the warnings of such a major uh, uh, calamity possibly hitting the country. From January last year, they were warned about uh, the COVID uh, uh, infection coming in. And they were at the end of January, beginning of February, too concerned with the Delhi elections and some elements of the ruling party went in and created uh, trouble and riots in Delhi. Then Mr. Modi was very busy to involve uh, welcoming uh, Donald Trump to the biggest stadium in India, which is now named after Mr. Modi, and talk about a super spreader event. That entire stadium was chock-a-block with his supporters and the whole rally you know, reminds you of Nuremberg or something. After that, they were busy trying to topple the Madhya Pradesh government. They were too distracted in March as well to look at the danger that was coming, the tsunami, that the first tsunami that was coming at them. And the reaction of the, the, the first lockdown was a knee-jerk reaction when suddenly the COVID infection was on them. Then came the China uh, invasion, really, of our territory. But they still had time between July and uh, uh, October when their ill-advised farmers' uh, laws brought out the farmer protests. But this government has been constantly obsessed with winning elections, holding on to power, 
subverting democracy in whichever way they can. And they have not really looked at the first primary duty, which is to protect the citizens of the country. Uh, I don't know, Rajiv can correct me, but the first, uh, the, the mutant that was, that's affecting people right now was first discovered in October last year. Britain sets up genome sequencing labs in April 2020. India only sets up genome sequencing labs in January this year. And the funding for those labs comes in March this year. Now, this for a country is not a scientific, rational response. And I think we are paying the price for that at the moment. Important. So some things came before, some things came after. But the overall response of this government has been ostrich head in sand and no respect for science of any sort. Uh, and that, that is a, a cruel price for, that we are paying right now for that. If I understand correctly, Lula Jacinto, the stakes are high with these regional elections in West Bengal, not just at a regional level, but nationally, because seats in the upper house of parliament are at stake. Yes, and uh, the the politician that uh, that you showed, Mamta Banerjee, she is the chief minister of, of West Bengal, a very fiery character. Uh, she is seen in in some quarters as po possibly the only candidate who could take on uh, Narendra Modi in national politics. So it's a very high stakes election. But you know, I mean, Indians are very well versed with uh, the, the Nobel Prize winning economist Amartya Sen, uh, whose main contention was that famines, as opposed to natural disasters, do not happen in democracies because democracies are accountable. And so there is, there is, a, there is a reduction of mismanagement, you know, the kind of famines that India saw in colonial times. And there is a level of mismanagement uh, in this crisis, which sort of begs the question of what happened to democracy, really? Uh, why is this government that is democratically elected, why has it failed? Is this the weaknesses of the democratic institutions? Is this the populism? Is this the knee-jerk reactions, blaming others, you know, blaming state authorities for a long time? Last week, the, the, the rhetoric on Twitter was about getting the US to, you know, to release uh, these, uh, these substances needed for the vaccine. There's always the other to blame. Uh, and on the other hand, the messaging from the BJP uh, government in the center is one of triumphalism. What I fear now is that, uh, you know, when this peak of the, the second wave uh, uh, subsides, are we going to see another round of triumphalism? Are we going to see, uh, you know, another lot of messaging saying we have now contained the second surge? Uh, so there is, there is uh, there, the, 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 the difference between, for instance, the messaging of the Biden administration, where targets are set, they are exceeded, and the message is still this is not enough. But the BJP is, uh, and, and the Modi administration is, is always hailing its own record. So, of course, the messaging in India was, you know, a mix of we are young, it is warm, we have high immunity. And it, it was a complete disconnect, uh, you know, to, for us in Europe to be in lockdown and to see, uh, you know, Facebook and Twitter posts of Indians traveling all over, uh, you know, getting in, getting together. You, you know, we saw variants rising. This should not have happened. Mahendra Jadeja, do you agree that um, for the uh, Modi government, it was winning those elections in West Bengal first, the public health crisis second? Well, uh, I think in, in my view, uh, you know, the public health is uh, more important than, uh, than winning the election there. But is, uh, that goes to the, you know, the every party. I think it's uh, the overall many, many parties and many, many celebrities, they fail to recommend the people to take the vaccine there. You know, the social distance, these are the things that never, ever developed. And they were, all of them, they were together. And you don't blame only one party. You blame each and every party. They're, you know, they're getting together. They're, they're all thinking about it, winning the election there. And, they, you know, the health of the, you know, the individual or the, you know, the public there, that came to the second there. And that is the biggest failure. And, and I can say that even the individual people should be responsible about to look after themselves rather than, you know, they're taking, uh, you know, the part in the mass rally. And that is uh, my thoughts. Uh, so I would not like to just only blame to the 
a party, but it's, uh, all are in the same boat. Rushir Joshi, uh, just tell us, uh, in West Bengal, during the campaign, uh, were they all in the same boat, the politicians? Did, did one side suspend its campaign rallies before the other? Well, uh, not initially, no. But uh, about uh, 10 days ago, or I think a little earlier than that, both uh, Trinamool Congress and uh, the Indian National Congress and CPIM all said that the, the seven phases of the election, the three remaining phases, should all be scrunched into one day, and that uh, all the uh, uh, campaigning should stop. And the Election Commission, which is widely seen to be uh, not neutral and quite biased towards uh, the BJP, the ruling party, uh, refused to scrunch the three phases of the election into one, one day. And uh, uh, the BJP also refused to uh, stop the rallies. Now, initially, there's no question. I don't think Mamta Banerjee, who is as uh, Leela Jacinto said, a fiery person, was defending, is fighting with her back to the wall. And uh, it's a matter of uh, sink or swim for her. So she was not looking to at all tell the people not to come to her rallies or to protect themselves. She didn't do that. And neither did the Congress CPM or uh, the so-called uh, Indian Secular Front people. But Mr. Modi and Mr. Shah were traveling to Bengal so many times across the month of April while the crisis was spiking all across India, right? So they have a slightly different responsibility to my mind than Mamta Banerjee or the Congress of the Opposition Parties. Yeah, I mean, and they found time to come in and to, to conduct rallies and say, oh, my God, I've never seen such a crowd. No one wearing a mask. Mr. Modi not wearing a mask. You know, and saying, I've never seen such a crowd. And already the mutant is taking its toll in Bombay and Delhi. So, yes, I think all politicians are responsible. I think uh, there was an antipathy to testing in Delhi with Mr. Kejriwal. There was an antipathy to testing in Calcutta with Mamta Banerjee last year when the uh, COVID thing first hit. Kerala is the only state that had a rational response to this. So I think all politicians somewhere are at different levels culpable for this crisis, but the central government and the BJP most of all. All right. There's also been the issue that's uh, startled a lot, uh, lots of people. Tweets by critics of the government's COVID of the government's COVID response being censored in India. Now, here in France, for instance, we can read what West Bengal politician Moloy Gattak had uh, to say. Um, uh, he is saying India will never forgive uh, the prime minister for underplaying the corona situation in the country and letting so many people die due to mismanagement at a time when India is going through a health crisis. The PM chose to export millions of vaccine to other nations. And then there's that hashtag. What, what does that mean, that hashtag, Leela? Modi Hatao Desh Bachao. What does that mean? Uh, throw away Modi, save the nation. Okay. I don't know whether it's that that made him, uh, that tweet. is. You can't see that tweet, or you couldn't as, a, as we were preparing the show earlier, inside of India. Is it the censors objecting to the text or the accompanying picture, which carried the caption, when uh, death bodies were burning, Nero was d busy doing election uh, rallies. Leela Jacinto, wh why censor these tweets? I mean, they're not exactly seditious or giving away state secrets. It's politicians with a bit of f f fire and brimstone, right? Right. Uh, the, the government's uh, uh, answer to this was that they were not censoring criticism, that it, uh, they were targeting fake news. India is awash with fake news. Uh, you take a tweet like, uh, you know, comparing uh, Modi's response to Nero. This is an opinion. It may be an overwrought opinion, but there's no fact-checking. You know, you're not going to go back to the Emperor uh, Nero. So, so this was an opinion tweet uh, that, that was withheld. Twitter is having a lot of problems. Uh, you know, the, 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 the Modi administration's grip on the 
Indian mainstream media is is very well known. India's ranking in uh, press index scales has fallen to 142 out of 180 countries. Uh, but this uh, this attempt to uh, you know extend the grip of social media because social media has absolutely stepped in with all the pros and cons that you know we've been talking about for decades. Because if you go on all our Twitter feeds, including the diaspora, uh, you know it you really see individuals out on their own, putting up messages uh, for supplies of oxygen. So, so social media has been functioning to uh, to help Indians uh, access uh, uh, information as well as express their opinion, which is not really expressed on mainstream uh, mass media. Mahendra Jadeja, do you agree that uh, it's wrong to censor uh, tweets? Well... There is a, you know, the quite a few, you know, the, you know, the tweet you're talking about. It's either it's a Twitter is a like a, it's a ultra modern way to, you know, communicate to the people. Now, how do you, uh, you know, the is it the fake news or fa not fake news? You know, the because as you know, the fake fake news travel faster than the, you know, the real news, and people always wanted to talk about the fake news because don't forget that. I think is India, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very, very glad to hear that uh, many, many people are using the Twitter there, and they're, they're very good on uh, the social media there. But sometimes social media need to be, you know, the control. Even the many, many countries, uh, you know, the controlling uh, in the Facebook and uh, other social media, if there is no right there. So it's, a, it's a, if the, if you think is they're giving you the panic to the unnecessary by you know the fake news to the you know the general public, then. And then the, each government has to think about it, and especially the central government is 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 they have got the you know the right to think about the you know the country because don't forget that India is the largest democracy uh, uh, in the world, and and if, if they if you don't control it, it's not that easy so far because it's we all all talk about the many many countries there, but India has got the 29 or. You know the state whereby everyone has got a different view, and I think is a wisely control would be an ideal thing uh, to to control the Twitter. All right, so disagreement on that on, on that score. Uh, Ru one final point on this: Rushir Joshi's newspaper, The Telegraph, quoting a senior Uttar Pradesh health department official, Uttar Pradesh, the most populous state in India, who took part in an online meeting Sunday with the, that state's chief minister, Yogi uh, Adyanat. Uh, in which uh, he is quoted as saying, the chief minister said that action must be initiated against hospitals that put up notices saying they had no oxygen and the patients should be shifted elsewhere. He said that there should be a probe to establish whether they deliberately tried to create a panic. Uh, Rajib Dasgupta, your reaction to that story? Well, <clears throat> the, the the medical fraternity from Uttar Pradesh has actually uh, uh, actually opposed it. They have they have gone as far as to say that uh, the chief minister is welcome to actually come and visit the hospital and verify for himself whether oxygen is indeed available or not. On the other hand, there have been the odd incidents of of uh, doctors and uh, medical personnel actually being subject to violence. Uh, once they had to refuse, uh, n not necessarily in Uttar Pradesh, on, on account of, uh, of, of oxygen, other amenities, or even beds uh, not being available. So it is, it, is a, it, it is a state of deep stress and distress, uh, particularly for, for patients uh, and, and their family members who are, who are seeking uh, beds and, and, and very basic life support desperately. What message would you like to hear from the prime minister at this point in time? Well, the big challenge that India is facing and is going to continue to face for the next several weeks uh, is a very, very large pool of active cases, nearly 3 million at the national level. And just for the city of Delhi, it's about 100,000 currently. Even if things plateau, uh, this, this cumulative pool is going to increase uh, for some time. And, and that's the challenge ahead. And that is a scenario where the state and the society have to work in harmony. There is no room for conflicts. All right, we'll leave, we'll, when we'll leave it there. And our thoughts uh, uh, go to all of those uh, who are working tirelessly, essential workers uh, uh, in India. 
Um, I know that COVID has uh, affected uh, our correspondents uh, I- I directly with their families, uh, and our thoughts go out to them at this point uh, in, in time as well. Uh, I- it's, uh, it's difficult times ahead, and as you say, Rajiv, let's hope that uh, people can pull together. I want to thank you for joining us uh, from the capital. I want to thank uh, Rushir Joshi, uh, in uh, Kolkata, or Calcutta, depending on how you pronounce it, uh, Mahendra Jadeja in London, Leela Jacinto, thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate.